Alright, Dark Souls 3 without using stamina. Who would have thought it would be possible? In the previous video I went through the entirety of the main game and doing that without stamina must have been the most exhausting thing I've ever done. Especially since you also very quickly exhaust your options as well. Since we only have two weapon arts, a practically useless pyromancy and two types of consumables to work with. Those are all the attacks available to us. However, as tiresome as that experience might have been, that wasn't the end of it. Because two DLCs still remain, and if the main game fights already contained such energy draining encounters, then just imagine the fights against Sister Frida, Gale and Dark Eater Medir. Yeah, that's gotta be rough. The point is that the main game was very difficult to survive through. And other than strategy, simply required a lot of favorable RNG as well. So perhaps the chances of me surviving through both DLCs will be one in a million. But before we uh, press continue, I uh, actually have to correct how I started the previous video where I proclaimed that a no stamina challenge would not be possible without modding the Onyx Blade into the game at the very start, given that every known skip required to acquire it uses stamina. Now it might be true that the first step is the most difficult one, but there is a significant difference between not possible and not feasible. So let's reverse engineer what you would need to do in order to acquire the Onyx Blade. Well, Sir Wilhelm can be persuaded to hand the Onyx Blade over by making him understand the gravity of the situation. But of course, to even get there in the first place, Crystal Sage needs to be defeated. But by then you can acquire Fire Surge, and it is very difficult to actually defeat this boss with that terrible pyromancy alone, so it would require a lot of grinding for levels to even have the damage output, and or FP necessary to get through it, as you will have limited flasks and no access to any method to regen FP, but the point is that it can be done. However, Fire Surge is after Vort, so the only way to inflict damage on Vort is by using Rope Firebombs, which can be bought from Grey Rat. You only have 10 of them, and not only will these hardly ever even connect in the first place, but when you see how pathetic the damage is, you might as well tie that rope around your own neck. However, you can use them to get rid of the hollows near the infamous Vort Skip location. So you won't get shot off the latch while getting into place. By using some very precise movement, you can in fact make it down safely while activating the kill cam, without using any stamina, and without dying in the process of course. And that means that you can glitch your way past the Vort altogether. So that means that only one final obstacle remains, and that is Judas Gundir. And as you might know, there is a pacifist strategy that involves the giant crystal lizard. However, can this be done without using stamina? Well, as I said before, there is a difference between not possible and not feasible. Because there is nothing about this strategy in principle that would make it impossible to do it without using stamina. Now, how feasible it is, that is very questionable. Because even when you can run, roll and block, it is already incredibly difficult and very RNG dependent whether or not you can get the Crystal Lizard to kill Gandhi for you. Especially because you have to put yourself in the line of fire. So without iframes and without blocking with a shield, the amount of favorable RNG required would be absolutely insane. But in theory at least, it could be done. So that means that there is a theoretical way to start a no stamina playthrough without the use of cheat engine. Now will it ever be done like that? Who can say? But of course this video is not about how to start a no stamina quote unquote run, 
it is about how to end it. And therefore it's time for the ringed city and the ashes of Ariandel. Now of course before we can even try our luck against the demon prince we need to somehow survive by slow walking past the angels. And um, yeah that might be a little bit of a slight massive issue. Now normally I would use the unintended shortcut by jumping down onto the branch. But without jumping or rolling we obviously cannot... Huh. Okay. Well I may have died from the fall damage but I did in fact manage to land on top of the branch. So if we can negate the damage from the fall... This should in fact be possible to pull off. However casting the spook spell costs stamina, meaning that our only option is acquiring the cat ring by doing Cirrus's... Cirrus's... Cirrus... Cirrus... God fucking damn it... Cirrus... Cirrus... By helping out that lady that's always sitting there and firing doing nothing. Well to be fair when fighting Kraten on the bridge she isn't exactly doing much more than that either. At least she's not doing that much useful. As Cyrus seems to not take things seriously because she is seriously sucking. And given that Creighton is chugging and hitting me while attacking in the opposite direction. Now that's fair. It did take about 12 billion tries but eventually Creighton croaked. <laughs> Blessings of the moon upon your journey. <laughs> she can kiss my moon. Thank you very much for the kitten bling. But the point is that I can now in fact survive the fall upon the branch. And thereby easily make my way to the demon prince. Now I did fight him, but given that I kinda went back and forth between bosses after many failed attempts, the retelling in this video is not going to be exactly in chronological order. So let's just say I encountered some issues against the demons, some very uh, unexpected and unusual issues. Issues of the kind of glitchy variety. Huh. Well, we'll deal with that later. I mean, we are of ash and fire befits us of course, but let's cool our blisters in the cold and gentle world of Ariandel first. Sort of. Because what that probably will entail is getting put on ice. Because how in the ever living fuckery of Fuckenstein am I possibly going to survive a free phase fight against a highly agile and aggressive enemy like Frida with all of her AoE and grab attacks that you cannot persevere through. However. Then something unexpected happened. Oh, as I said, hey, that's that's pretty helpful. <laughs> okay, now I don't know what. What the hell? <laughs> that's kind of helpful when she's stuck like that. Okay, that <laughs> was kind of weird, but okay. So, because of Frida's lack of poise, cornering her, plus her tendency to counterattack after getting hit, but doing it slowly enough to get another hit in, was definitely a very welcome discovery. But the second phase was a different story, given that I did already know that Frida is designed to reach her inputs, mainly meant for casting, but using items, and apparently weapon arts as well, will have the same effect where each time you use it, she is designed to dash towards you. Which is uh, kind of a problem because Ariandel is the least dangerous of this duo. He is only second to none after all. But he will block your view of Frida who then can suddenly attack you because she won't just stay at a distance. Because of her input reading. In fact even when she does stay away, getting out of her ice AoEs while doing a slow attack animation and then walk away in time. Yeah, that's a really awful combination. Now fortunately I do inflict massive damage to Ariandel, and because of my poise damage, he will stagger relatively easily. Allowing for even more hits, at least if Frida allows it. Yeah, it's kind of RNG dependent. However, even after all of that, there is still the third phase remaining, where she becomes hyper aggressive, gains attacks that reach across the screen, has massive multi-head combos and a grab attack that you can neither outspace by walking alone nor block with perseverance. Which makes her a jack of all trades and the master of nuns. However, given that she is a nun, the last thing you would expect her to do is to get rid of her habit. So will the tendency she showed in her first phase imply that in her third phase, old habits die hard. Unexpectedly hard, perhaps. Yeah, now I'm fucked I think. Oh, bad start. Ok, 
Okay, nice. That's a nice loop. The fuck? The fuck? The fuck? What the hell? Okay. That was a nice loop. What the fuck? Okay, I'll take it. Well, that was <laughs> that was a bit anticlimactic, but hey, I'm. <laughs> Sure. Thank you, Frida. <laughs> huh. Well, uh, that happened. So, I guess if you ever struggle with Frida, just cheese her by not using stamina. I guess. Huh. If cookies could have children, I would say son of a biscuit. Well, now Frida is in the grave because of her tendency, but there is another boss tending a grave. And I made the grave mistake to include this fuckfest of a pathetic excuse of a boss fight. In fact, getting rid of the wolves with any kind of consistency was already a problem. Because they just randomly dash all over the place. And as you know, my hitbox cannot exactly be described as reliable. In fact, even when trying to free aim to face away from them, since the hitbox seems to be on your right side, didn't work all that well either. In fact, some people pointed it out in the previous video. But no, it doesn't actually really work that way. In fact, that can actually cause you to do less damage since it makes it even more likely to get these weird parcel hits that inflict only minor damage. Again, it's a very peculiar hitbox. In fact, it seems to consist of multiple hitboxes in one. However, I had to use the Onyx Blade because obviously rope firebombs and fire certs don't even inflict any meaningful damage and their resistance to frost is simply too high. In other words, this was definitely an RNG fest that could be described with an adjective like fuck. But unexpectedly, Gravetender himself was the worst part of this fight. Given that he could constantly dodge or block my attacks, and basically no attack window worked consistently. Not even breaking his guard would guarantee another attack opportunity. In fact, not even Perseverance helped all that much. Now even though he already has one foot in the grave when he summons Storbrand Sif, <laughs> Good luck killing him before it can actually reach you. Or you know, at all. And when the wolf is there, all bets are off. Because I have actually no idea what the fuck is even happening. Given that the camera is buried in your face half the time. Maybe this is what inspired the moveset of the ulcerated tree spirit or something. I'm underground again? Wow. Okay, I, I need to heal, fuck. I don't see anything. I can't get away, I can't get away. I can't get away. I couldn't get away at all. Absolutely horrendous. Oh, nice frame drop there, by the way. What the hell? I put, what even was happening, dude? You can't even see anything. Why can't I hit him? Fucking insane. I can't hit him. I, I'm getting stun locked. Yeah. The moment I get stun locked, it's over. And I just don't even see uh, Grave Tender coming. <laughs> that didn't hit? How the fuck did that not hit? How did that not hit?
I don't have any healing. I... Are you kidding me? Really? But then I decided to take the opposite approach and not even try to kill Grave Tender before the wolf could show up. But instead take things slowly, methodically, in order to try to hold on to as many Essence Flasks as I possibly could. However, then this happened. Oh, that's nice. Can't switch. Wow. What the hell? Damn it, I don't understand the moveset of this guy. Ah, I got him! Wow! Well, that kind of came out of nowhere, but I'm very happy about it. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's be honest, this was mostly RNG. I did, I tried to save more uh, Estus uh, by taking it slower with, uh, with Grave Tandle, but basically if I hadn't been able to suddenly kill him out of nowhere before, before the wolf showed up... <laughs> Wow, complete RNG. <laughs> In the end, it's complete RNG, no matter how you uh, how you do it. Ah! Oh my God! <laughs> His moveset is he flails all over the damn place. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. A bit like the illustrated uh, tree spirit. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. That's what uh, the moveset is. Ah. Well, Grave Tender and his giant little mud might be six feet under now, but I have to travel much further down below to where the Demon From and Demon In Pain are. Well, chronologically this actually happened before that, but whatever. But at least contrary to the Grave Duo, I am quite familiar with this duo's moveset. <coughs> gluk, 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 gluk. Just trying to lure them into a false sense of security. However, avoiding damage consistently when you can only walk is quite a tall order. Not to mention avoiding the toxic laser. Or even worse, the fact that they can move faster than I can. Now at least in the first phase, I can inflict a good amount of damage against them. And I rather frequently get a stagger because of the poise damage I do. I cannot do a critical attack obviously, but it is a free damage opportunity nonetheless. Regardless, even though I had some good attempts, I simply ran out of Astus long before I could finish this very lengthy encounter. Because in the second phase, the Demon Prince takes much less damage and inflicts so much more damage. Even when using Perseverance. Now speaking of the second phase, normally, like almost everyone else I suppose, I would go for the laser version. However, I was worried that I would not be able to close the distance in time when he would jump away to do the laser attack. Especially because I would have to persevere through the wave he causes, given that that would knock you back. So therefore I chose the Demon in Pain version instead. And initially that did seem like a smart decision, because when he's doing the Chaos Orbs, and spitting lava upwards afterwards, he leaves himself completely open, meaning that I could not only inflict a lot of damage, but even stagger him out of those attacks. Well, that's what I thought at least. However, it only applies to the Chaos Orbs, which he will simply do again after recovering from getting staggered. And when you stagger him during the lava spit, apparently it doesn't matter, because you will still get obliterated, when then inevitably fire and brimstone rains down upon you. Therefore, making sure that the laser version would be the second phase seemed to be the better decision after all. 
But uh, speaking of the second phase, what in the ever living fuck was happening here? Th that that's not supposed to be possible. What the fuck is happening? What is happening? Is this some crazy kind of glitch? What the fuck? What the fuck is happening? Just what the hell? I have never seen this. What the hell happened? How is that even possible? What the fuck? I guess... It's a good thing this is on camera or on recording. What the fuck? So, some sort of absurd glitch happened. And not once, not twice, but simply once in a while. Seemingly at random. Where during the first phase, one of the demons would somehow gain the second phase moveset already. Apparently this is a known glitch, but it's not clear what causes it, other than that it has something to do with poison damage. But given that I didn't know why it happened, I had no way of preventing it. Meaning we had yet another layer of RNG in this fight. Not only would I have to survive into the second phase with enough essence remaining, but I would also have to be lucky enough that one of the demons wouldn't glitch into the second phase moveset while having a really good attempt. So this entire place might be lit up with the light of a thousand suns and engulfed in smoldering heat, but the walking I was doing here was anything but on sunshine. Oh, and I don't feel so good. This is actually nice. <laughs> oh, the glitch. Oh my god. It went so well and the glitch happened. Well, that's just unfair. Come on. Wow. <laughs> I accidentally staggered the other one. Fuck delicious. Fuck. Really? Only one FP flask, so that's going to be nice. Fuck, ooh. Uh, it's better than nothing. Shit. Oh, 
Oh, that almost went wrong. No! Die! No, why can't I hit him? Die! Fuck you! Oh. 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 Son of a whore! Oh. Uh, my doctor is not going to be happy. Or maybe he is going to be happy. He's going to make money. Fuck! <laughs> I'm literally physically shaking. <laughs> Adrenaline rush. Yeah, exactly. Wow. We made progress. We made progress. Wow. <sighs> I was actually quite worried about making my way to the next boss fight. And so were most people in the chat. After all, not only am I not that great at being stealthy, as you might remember from the main game. But I cannot exactly tiptoe through tulips in the ring city despite my heritage because you're getting straight up ambushed the moment you arrive there. However, it turned out that getting past the archers by walking alone wasn't even all that different from a regular playthrough. In fact, the one thing that did get me killed was, uh, well, uh, me forgetting to equip the cat ring. Yeah. Now, I did have a close call on the staircase because of the harrowing hack and slash havoc of the herald knights. But somehow I managed to persevere through it. And the same with the ring knights. And even the first encounter with Medir. It's surprising but even though I could only walk slowly step by step. I still managed to be one step ahead of every obstacle somehow. And therefore I made it rather quickly to the second encounter with Medir on the bridge. In fact I didn't even have to change my approach that much in order to knock Medir down into the abyss. It's basically the same strategy that I assume everyone uses here. Bait his fire breath. Move underneath him and step on the stoves essentially. The main difference was that my damage output wasn't that great and I couldn't do the critical attack for obvious reasons. So would this mean that in the actual fight against Medir I could turn him from an eater of the dark into an eater of my dust? Well, guess we're not going to find that out yet. In fact I decided that he should be the final fight of this playthrough. Because I would be respecking one last time in order to deal with his massive resistance to dark damage. So before we will face the deepest dark, we first have to survive the twilight where it's only half light. And a lot of you guys probably know that I hate this sorry excuse for a boss, even more so than Grave Tender since this fight isn't even optional. But the main issue is the lack of options here. I mean, I cannot cheese him with the storyteller staff after all. And when using the Onyx Blade, I can hardly ever even get a hit in. My damage isn't that great either, and they can simply heal whatever little damage I can do to them. In fact, they can even dodge the frost AoE. And speaking of the scythe, even if I try to cheese Half-Light through the pillar since the AoE can only barely reach through it, he can instantly choose to run up to me and simply stunlock me to death. And that is if I can even make it that far to begin with, given that I have zero stamina to work with. And, well, they seemingly have an infinite amount. Ah, huh, well, yeah, that, that's, that's a fair fight. Okay then, so you want to play dirty? Well, I know how to play dirty. And no, I'm not actually referring to dropping stock poopa in front of the fork wall. Although I did actually resort to attempting that. But no, I'm referring to something quite magical. Despite the fact that I cannot use any sorceries. 
Ah, <laughs> the firekeeper knows exactly what I mean. Think of it. We'll use it to take control of people's minds. <laughs> yeah, it's really cheap. But yeah, fuck it. I do have an audience, so all I need is to get online. Then have one of my viewers be the boss and just let me win. <laughs> I'm so evil. Alright, so we have... Uh, wow, the father of evolution itself. That's quite an honor. That is someone in the chat, right? It, hello? Please tell me that's one of my viewers. Hello? What? Huh? Well, well, this might be slightly backfiring. Well, he still could be one of my viewers. I mean, my audience is filled with sadists after all. Maniacal laugh. <laughs> Maniacal laugh. <laughs> Maniacal laugh. <laughs> Maniacal laugh. <laughs> but yeah, apparently you cannot use a password system for invasions of this kind. So I couldn't actually manage to have one of my viewers be the invader. Other than just pure luck. So all we had to work with was apparently Charles Darwin, who clearly evolved himself. Or perhaps I should say de-evolved. Or even more likely, he was just playing around with his food. Because then uh, this happened. Well, this is certainly an interesting fight. <laughs> Oh fuck, wrong bottle. Thank you so much, kind sir. Thank you. <laughs> oh my god. And it's not even a viewer. That's great. He just played around. And it worked out. <laughs> and it's not even a viewer. That's the nicest thing. But he was just playing around, obviously. I mean, he was not even trying to win. He was just uh, trolling with, uh, the, with the mist and all <laughs> that kind of stuff. But hey. Thank you, Charles Darwin. First you taught us about where we came from, and now uh, you allowed us to go somewhere. I mean, that is deep. That is deep when you think about it. Wow. Huh. So, I guess it's not always the fittest to survive. But he was naturally selected for, because I have no idea who this guy actually was. He evidently was not one of my viewers. So, the origin of this specimen is kind of a mystery to me. But if he ever happens to see this video, then Charles... Thank you very much. However, he was not the only old bearded guy that stood in our way. No, there is a storm approaching. Because Gil is coming on like a hurricane. Yeah, Gil is already incredibly difficult with just regular, no roll, no sprint. Which is anything but regular, but you understand the comparison. Because then you can actually still use effective weapons. And despite the fact that the Onyx Blade only requires two hits to stagger him, which sounds incredibly beneficial, and it would be if you wouldn't constantly get these annoying partial hits. And yes, I do mean constantly. Heck, even the elevation in the terrain made a difference. Because as ginormous as the arena is, almost nowhere is there a flat surface. Moreover, those places are not exactly safely accessible at this speed to begin with. To make it worse, Perseverance will only get you so far because Gil does way too much damage and has way too much health to just keep tanking your way through. So, what was my strategy? Uh, uh, I didn't exactly have one. For the first phase at least. I very much had a very effective strategy for his second form. At least if I could execute it properly. But uh, the problem is even getting a single goddamn chance to even attempt to execute it in the first place. Because Gil kept executing me with his decrepit sword specifically meant for that purpose. 
However, when he gets into his second form, he will gain his teleportation. And I had a different purpose for that in mind than I assume he had. But again, if I could even make it to the second phase in the first place. Well, a journey of a thousand attempts begins with a first step. So I just had to keep putting one foot in front of the other. Because even though in principle, in theory, I could sidestep his entire second and third phases. But when it comes to sidestepping the attacks of the first phase, it was a slow learning process. Just a few baby steps at a time. Oh, I was getting so desperate. I just needed one opportunity. Please just give me one chance to get him into a second phase. Because I fear that at this rate, when I finally do, I will have even more of an epic beard than he has. I'm com going to run out of Estus like this. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, I can't. <laughs> I don't have enough assets for this. No, didn't hit. What the fuck? Why did that hit? Yeah. I have two Estes. Well, at least I got an opportunity, but uh, I only have two Estes. Oh my god, this is gonna suck. Okay, first of all, let's unequip this. But I need to get him in the right position now. And that's easier said than done. Because I'm so slow. Yeah, and there go the fucking Corona. Damn it, he's so much faster than I am. Yeah, those things go to, through walls. No, he, he has to be down there and he isn't. No, he's not in the right location. Oh my god, this is a nightmare. Yeah, still not in the right position. He needs to be down here. Okay. Oh, fuck. Don't hit me. Ah! Oh, are you kidding me? Fuck you! What the fuck, dude? That was like a millimeter off. Son of a fuck. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Eat shit. I don't know where he is. No. Surprise, motherfucker. Whoa, what the fuck? I didn't even know that he was there. Yeah, now I don't have any healing. That is such a nightmare, that single teleport. Come on, just teleport, do it. That's the right position, he's in the right position. Oh, but I don't have any healing. <laughs> Oh, 
Oh, all right. Now, I cannot safely reset it, so that I'm not going to do it. Let's put a timer on. So, every 30 seconds I can inflict frost until he gets into his third phase. Because then he can hit me with the, the lightning attack. Still not third phase. Oh, yes, there's the first phase. Ah, uh, third phase. Well, at least the lightning will damage him a slight amount. <laughs> a very slight amount. I can't believe I've never seen this cheese before, it's beautiful. Uh, I got it from Gino Machino. He actually showed it in... Uh, he dis I think he actually discovered it uh, when he did a great bow only run. And he got him uh, stuck there. <sighs> only a few more. Now Medea is still alive. Ah, Gil, without stamina <laughs> and with a lot of cheese. Ah, wow. All right, only one boss remaining. Only one more boss that stands in our way of completing the entirety of Dark Souls 3 without using any stamina. One final respec to make the Onyx Blade do as much physical damage as possible. And it turned out to be one giant unsurmountable obstacle. Yes, quite unexpected given how avoiding most of Medea's attacks isn't even all that different from when you can run and roll. But despite that, it seems to be that we ran out of steam just to crash and burn right before the finish line. But why? Why Medea specifically? Sure, our damage is bad and we cannot do the giant critical attack. But I have done lengthy Madeir fights before. Heck, there are examples of no roll and no sprint fights at the SL1 at Nuke Plus 7. So why wouldn't this be doable? Well, because there is one crucial difference. Mandatory damage. There are four moves in total that are actually truly unavoidable under these circumstances. Now, two of which can be dealt with to an extent. I mean, the charge is unavoidable, but can be limited by staying close to him. And the flying fire breath can sometimes be avoided by walking diagonally to the left. However, whether you get hit or not depends on Medir's movement, not on yours. So he is the determining factor there. But when he gets into his second phase, he will gain two variations of the dark tracers. And when you cannot run or roll, those are truly unavoidable with the exception of using a weapon art, but that uses stamina. So that's not a possibility either. That's the reason why none of the no roll, no sprint SL1 victories contain those attacks. Because when he does it, it's a failure. Meaning you keep trying until you get the right RNG. However, even on SL1 Nukem Plus 7, the fight takes no longer than about 5 minutes. But under my circumstances, it will take about 25 minutes. So when you take mandatory damage over that much time, it becomes a battle of attrition where Medir's massive HP will simply outlast our HP. So with that realization, my walk through the lands of Lothric turned into a walk of shame and then came to a standstill because my endurance truly reached zero. No, that I could not accept. If I have to crawl before I walk, then so be it. And as much as I hate farming, I guess it's in my blood, it's in my heritage. Now it would take an insane amount of time, but yeah, fortunately, I don't really have any shame. So we can do some, let's say, creative farming. To level up from down in the abyss, all the way into the heavens above. 99 attunement and 55 faith, not so much for damage, but for the dark resistance. All of my assets for healing. Have an amber ready, a divine blessing and a hidden blessing to restore our massive FP bar instead of wasting valuable S's on that. The Winged Knight set for maximum dark defenses, Lloyd Sword Ring to increase my damage when at full health, 
and switching to the Sun Princess ring to regen when not at full health. A blast shield and a simple shield to switch between for either HP or FP and hopefully a lot of luck because that would be the final step I would need to complete this journey to complete Dark Souls 3 without stamina. One small step for a lowly hollow but it would be one giant leap to restore my humanity. Oh fuck, he's already doing the Dark Tracers. Oh, damn it. Okay, I have to heal now. How many damage you take from the Dark Tracers is also RNG dependent, by the way. <laughs> but the thing is, I have to move away from uh, him, otherwise I will. he can immediately attack you again. Uh oh, damn it, can I avoid that? Uh oh, not good. No, no! Shit, delicious! Damn it! I want to at least get damage in if, if he's going to take damage on me. I want to do damage on him as well. <sighs> oh fuck, he's so far away! That's the other Dark Tracers you can do. Oh, let's do both at the same time. Fuck you. Now he's, he's starting to spam. Well, there's the giant stagger, but... Oh, he doesn't move all the way back. That's good. Get some extra hits in. Oh, that's good. Not a lot, but it's something. I have seven more Estus and a Divine Blessing left. Come on, this should be doable. Fuck, that was not a good full hit. Damn it, I'm still against close to a wall. That's not good. You know what? Fuck it. I got the uh, extra. Oh, ooh. Oh, damn it, he does it again. That was. Okay, that was not smart to heal. But I want to get as much damage in as possible now. Shit. Okay. Ooh. Now he's going to charge. Oh no. Oh, I got lucky. I got lucky. Oh, again? Fuck you. Uh, it's not that much damage. Damn it. Against the wall. Okay, I need to reposition myself. Fuck! Oh, I'm not in a good position here. Come on, let's not fuck up now. Fuck! Whoa! Can I even get away from him? Oh! Uh. <laughs> Perseverance to be safe. Well, it worked out. Shit! Combination of both. Persevere. Whoa! Shit! Oh, he doesn't do the tracer. That's good. Ah, fuck it. I'll just heal. Oh, fuck. Ooh, wrong, 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 wrong.
shit. No! Uh, will he survive? Oh, I can kill him now, I think. Oh, come on, just... Fuck you! Dark Souls 3, no stamina, 100% complete. Main game, and both DLCs. Oh, <laughs> I had to be at a ridiculously uh, high level to finish the final fight, but hey. I'll take it, I think I've suffered enough. And that's it, it's done. Well, almost. I mean, just for the sake of all the dumb fuck, of all the misguided people thinking that Hevel's armor would have been my best option, I decided to take on Hevel himself. And, uh, well, it turns out it serves him quite a bit better than it could ever serve me. But, at least, I do have his armor now. I mean, it's the armor of armors, apparently. So, it's finally time to blast off at the speed of light team rocket star. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. I mean, when you try to rock without rolling, you'll just walk into a stone wall. However, to break through my own mental barriers, I had to face my PTSD by truly finishing this playthrough by claiming victory over the second Dragon Slayer armor. And that, that was really the end of the playthrough. So let's finally use stamina for a celebratory fat roll. Bye everyone! Oh, oh fuck, <laughs> I actually forgot how to roll.